Good morning friends. What I did was I sowed some new seeds and I placed this mesh on top so that nothing will come and disturb it because we have issues with possums and raccoons and stuff. So in this first bed I have calendula from 2020 that had a lot more petals than the recent one that I have. But the recent one that I have, the Pacific Beauty, it has different colors. So um, I just want to see if I have any seeds that come up from that first batch that I ever grew. And they're bright orange, but they have a ton of petals. So next I have Arctic King Lettuce. And in each of these beds, in each of these slots, I put about two to three sometimes four seeds because um, they just they're kind of small so they dropped in there bok choy and another bok choy from seeds of change brand and swiss chard and swiss chard bright lights from johnny's seeds tatsoi from Baker Creek because they have tons of leaves so they make a lot of food and garlic chives three of them and I put them in this tub so that I can um, water from below so that way I don't disturb the soil because in the past when I water from above I tend to kill it so um, I'm not very gentle with my plants and I'm trying to do something different so there it is I'm covering it up again and in a few weeks we'll see how many come up and the reason why I have so many redundant seeds um, that I'm growing is because I'm sharing it with my family Hi friends, so this is mealworm frass and along with mealworm bedding and it's kind of like worm castings but it's a dry form so it's called frass because we raise mealworms and we sort we just sorted them last night my daughter and my husband and uh, you put the larvae with the larvae, the beetles with the beetles, and such, it's because they have different um, cycles, different parts in their cycles. So um, he cleared out the bedding and the frass, and the frass can be used just like worm castings. So I'm going to spread it around to help fertilize a lot of my plants. And it's full of nutrients because the mealworms eat like slices of apples, potatoes, carrots, stuff like that. And of course it goes through their system and then it comes out the other end. So it's full of nutrients. Hope you give that a try. And I just scoop it with a little can and I just lightly spread it on two different plants. <clears throat> so tomato alley fell over and I propped it up with some metal um, that was kind of upright that's about four feet tall some stakes so because this was fallen over right here and it was laying down this way, so that's why the leaves are yellow down there. They weren't getting sun. Propped it up and gave it some room. Right now I'm not going to thin it out because it's nearly the end of the season. I'm hoping for some kind of fruit. And as you can see, I spread out the frass everywhere. And I'm going to water it in. And it's totally safe 
to spread onto your plants just like warm castings. It's especially good to spread the frass on bananas and papayas because they're heavy feeders. So I made sure that my papayas got a lot of frass all around it. The Chicago Peace Roses are looking gorgeous. They were dying at a rate of uh, one bloom per day because it was so darn hot that it was these tender petals were burning up It's been cloudy uh, off and on and the rain that was promised us Because a few weeks ago just a week ago is 108 110 104 degrees and Then it did a little tiny sprinkling for a day not even a day, a few hours that day, uh, because we were having some kind of storm, and it's quite muggy, but no rain, not enough water, hardly, and uh, it said it was going to rain for like two days, and we didn't get that whatsoever, and the only good thing is that it's not a hundred and something degrees, it's now in the 80s. So a couple of my pomegranates were ripped open or they opened up um, on their own, which I don't believe they do. I think they were ripped open. And so something got to that one. Now it's time to harvest the ones I actually protected. So this one is, this one's a little bit smaller than, than this one, which is huge. This one doesn't fit in my hand. So I'm gonna get that one for sure. This one's also the size of that second smaller one. So this is my third one. So lesson learned, it does help to bag your fruits. Since I'm going to be eating only one, I'll harvest this big one. It's a, it's a wonderful palm, palm wonderful. Oddly, my bird pepper plant only produced a few, something like 40 little peppers, chilies, and it has not produced since. So I'm not sure if it's not hot enough, not sunny enough, um, but I'm going to cut it down and let it overwinter because I heard that um, there's no reason to have the pepper growing that high and it'll conserve um, energy and nutrients and grow many more branches. It'll be bushier, not so tall, and it'll provide more fruit next year. Same with this uh, Anaheim chili pepper. It is now four feet tall. I'm gonna cut it down to, to a little nub. So I harvested the largest pomegranate. I'll harvest the other one after I've eaten this one. I have this eggplant and a snacking pepper. There's another orange one on its way and many more eggplants on their way, but they're a little too small. Look at this thing of beauty. I took the bag off of it. It's quite large. Something tried to get to it, but it's only superficial. It is quite large, quite heavy, and probably very juicy. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be red on the outside, but because it's so large and it's the end of the season, I'm pretty sure it's ready to go. And it's so heavy. <clears throat> Lesson learned. Definitely bag all your fruit so that the wildlife doesn't get to it before you do. Which they tend to here. I think they get more than their 50% share. So these are the seeds that I used for the new plant starts, 2020 calendula, that I saved the seeds from 2020. 
Johnny's Bright Lights De Decorticated Swiss Chard. Garlic Chives, which I love so much. I hope they grow. So I just recently found out that um, the seeds don't last very long. So like if you were to save seed, you would have to use these almost the next year right away because they don't last very long. Arctic King Lettuce. It's kind of like that bib lettuce. So you could do wraps or salads. Bok choy, which I love. I love the crunch, the succulent of it, the mild flavor. I just love everything about bok choy and pak choy. Tatsoi, which is very similar because it's leafy up here and down at the bottom it's kind of succulent like the bok choy and it just keeps producing tons of leaves. This is a plant that is so worth buying. I love it so much and it has a great flavor too. So today I sowed some new seeds, some fairy morris chives in here, and two types of spinach. So I grew some fairy morris chives, organic, non-GMO, some spinach, bloom still long standing and some giant noble so we can get lots of greens for soups and other things like stews or light stir fry or salad also harvested a kefir lime they're really only good for their um skin so that you zest it but i'm hoping to find some seeds inside so it can possibly grow more of these kefir limes so recently we changed our configuration on our cisterns because before I had to use this tube and open the knob and then it'll come out that way with a hose adapter but now he's set it up to um, a pump that will pump the water out of the two big cisterns in a lot more force or a lot more power so that it's not just draining out slowly so I can use a sprayer nozzle so that's really cool so why are we sowing seeds so late in September because just a couple just a week ago it was in the high 100 degrees <clears throat> three digit temperatures 110, 108, 104. So it was way too hot to start any seedlings. It was too hot to be outside. There were mosquitoes ravaging us and so this is the best time. It's right now 80, 80 degrees or maybe even less than that actually because it's overcast this morning. So you don't even feel the heat on your shoulders. So it must not have reached 80 yet. It's going to be 84, it says. So these are the cooler crops that we can grow. And we couldn't grow them before now because they would have just died. It, they would have, The soil would have dried up immediately. So right now, that soil is quite moist. And this one is newly planted today. So I'm going to try to succession plant several things um, the next few weeks so that I'll have fall crops. Uh, I haven't grown any brassicas because I need to figure out where I'm going to grow them and I need that special cover that's green that prevents white flies and cabbage worms and all kinds of things from going in there because this past year and the year before I had lots of aphids. I had lots of white flies and I especially especially had harlequin bugs eating the brassicas they're attracted to brassicas so and despite my love for brassicas which I've grown ever since I started gardening um, I've had tons of kale I've had less kale 
Um, I've had broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and they've done well. And I've had the aphid problem, and then I started having the white fly problem. And this past the past two years, I've had the uh, harlequin bugs. So I need to figure it out. I need I can't afford the that um, mesh yet. Um, something significant, and I have to kind of rearrange the garden. Speaking of, now the sun is coming out amongst the clouds. So this whole area I'm gonna have to weed out and pull out my beloved plants. So I have some roses here and uh, an avocado that volunteered itself. I had a mum but I think it died. So that was what I was trying to save here. And I'm gonna pull these, I'm gonna transplant those out, weed this whole area and Pull out those garden beds there, the wooden garden beds, and I'm going to move the chicken coop to this section here where the garden beds are. Pull up that trellis of bitter melon and stuff. Move all those potted plants and stuff over there. Cut down the canna, and I'm going to grow stuff over there where the chickens are, and put the chickens here. Um, they've been in that section for about two years now, and we just want to move them over here close to the wall so they'll get more shade this year, this coming year. Another word is that it may look disorganized, but it's an organized disorganization. It's just that things move around, things change, it's not always stagnant. The trees that go into the ground, they are semi-permanent. They're mostly permanent if I've decided to put them in the ground, but sometimes you may have to move them. Um, sometimes you keep them there, but you move the surrounding plants or you change your configuration around as you garden to, as you figure out what you wanna do to um, make things better over time. Hi friends, so here I have the section where I have my zinnias growing and then I have this trellis that I was growing green beans up it and the green beans are not doing too hot right now. There's a blossom right there, you can see it, but um, for the most part it's dying. Um, it was getting a little shaded out with the canna. And in fact, there's one bean right there that I can harvest the seeds from because it's dried out. And um, it's the long bean variety. Um, so I'm just going to let it die off there. Um, I'll take the seeds. But down here I just made a hole. And I had collected these sweet pea seeds about two years ago. So for like two years I have not been growing these because I have no space for them and being that I have this trellis already set up here and the beans are dying I'm gonna grow the sweet peas here and it'll give me some flowers right here that will I don't think it will entirely um, insulate my zinnias to overwinter them but at least I'll have something pretty to look at straight out my um, back window so let me plant so these seeds now and we'll see if they come up and how viable these seeds are from being about two years old possibly three years old and being that I don't know how how viable they are I'm gonna sow several here in, in a row
and just thinking about it now I kind of thought I might have messed up because I could have grown food I could be growing snow peas sweet peas I mean snow peas or snap peas um, but it's too late I already stuck these seeds in there um, it's no big deal so I had some good soil there that I stuck on top of all that and we'll see if they pop up and I have this canna that I dropped chopped and dropped to kind of surround it so that hopefully things don't come digging around this area here and it will spawn some beautiful flowers here hi friends so gardening is quite a bit of work. There are many things to do so today we're busily uh, tackling this job. This was a huge lemon tree. Humongous. And I guess I should step back to show you. So this whole area right here was full of branches, lower branches, and we cut them down and we're clearing it out and kind of cleaning it up so a few months ago i discovered that there was some weed trees growing so this grew and it was quite tall and here it's got um, more branches coming out i'm not really sure what this is so it grew yet another branch here and some more branches tree stumps there and a huge tree stump over there. So if you guys know what it is, it starts off green and then it becomes that brown mottled looking. And then the leaves look like fig tree leaves. Oh, sorry. Right there, like that. So I'm not sure what it is. I'm trying to get rid of it. The problem is it's right against our lemon tree. So we can't really do anything to it too much. Um, as it's right next to our lemon tree and we don't want to kill our lemon tree while trying to kill that weed tree <clears throat> that uh, undesired tree but um and then we're raking out all this stuff so look at all the mulch we have a huge pile that was here and just cleaning it up making chopping and dropping um, we're going to shred the branches down and then we're just going to let it break down and refeed our um, plants in our garden and it's going to bring in more light and airiness and bring health to our plants 